Good morning, good afternoon, and welcome back to Watching Chickies. Now here on day 91, part 3 of our broadcast. And Watching Chickies is the daily live stream here on Reddit, and then later YouTube about the lives and development of these three young chickens. Right before you, here in my lap, we have our little silky rooster named Stormy. And Stormy's just kind of preening his soft and fluffy feathers. The silky breed originally comes from China, and they were bred first around 2,000 years ago. And CZMG, well, thank you for the love award there. And hello there, Banalis, and hello there, February Monster. And Stormy's little mohawk is always rocking. Yes, it is. Yes, it is, my little rooster. Our little Bravehearts just having a little nap on my knee. Ooh. Sorry there, Braveheart. Sorry. You go back to sleep, my lovely. You go back to sleep. And right here, just being a bit more awake. Focusing on all of these uh, feathers right here on her front is our Onagadori Kagome. Itching her head, doing a bit of preening, and just being a lovely little chicken there. And hello there, Polarity. And hopefully this time the Arpan gods will keep us back on the air. We've already had two technical difficulties today, so hopefully we will not have a third. My, my, my. There we go, there we go. Yeah. And they might not have liked today's treat too much, and that was the, uh, the dried baby anchovies, but at least they do enjoy getting all of these pets, and just hanging out with me here in the playroom. After this, they have a lot of kind of foraging on the lawn, and a little bit of fun in the sun to look forward to. Uh, yesterday was the first day that I've really felt kind of um, chilly going outside. It feels like uh, summer is really dissipating here in Connecticut now. There was a bit of a um, cool breeze going about. And I know Lauren's already thinking of uh, knitting the uh, little chickens some sweaters for going out in the fall and the winter. Little sweaters for little chickens. Oh, and hello there, Sushi de Carne. And that will be a nice little sight. Seeing you guys going about with little sweaters, flapping about, looking at all of the changing leaves. I wonder if you guys are going to be trying to eat the leaves as you go around, jumping in and out of them. There'll be a few less bugs for you to go for, but you know, there's still some vegetation for you to eat as well. And CH was 20. How long do dogs live for? Well, I'm not a, a, an expert on that. Um, generally, from what I've seen, the smaller uh, breed of dog that you have, generally speaking, the longer that they'll live for. I know some certain um, bigger dog breeds tend to live a bit less long. My um, aunt had a Rhodesian Ridgeback. And I believe, like, on average, they, they live for about, like, eight or nine years. And I think that's just the case of them being so big, their hearts being so big and everything, the bigger body to support. And, um, CH was 20. How do you adopt chickens, and do you like them more than other, um, pets? And, you know, um, I've had a variety of different pets. I've had uh, dogs, uh, guinea pigs, I've had um, a bearded dragon, I've had fish, 
and all of them have different sorts of um, pros and cons. Oh, and I didn't realize huskies can live over 20 years. Oh my, oh my. And as I said before, I was not a dog expert. But that is quite a long time. Um, but I think chickens have their own um, bit of loveliness to them. Um, they are a lot warmer than I ever thought they could be. Um, they are very social little animals. And then you can get the added benefit of them producing a few eggs for you and your family. Um, if you're interested in um, getting involved with chickens, your first step is to look at your local laws and regulations. There are many places in the United States and around the world that will not allow you to actually own chickens or will have restrictions on how many you can have, whether or not you can have roosters. So it's always worth checking before you introduce a few new, new little pets into your family. Um, after you've gone through that, um, if you are looking for chickens, you can look at local farms. Um, you can also look at um, animal rescues. Uh, these days, many animal rescues will actually um, rescue chickens as well as dogs and cats. So it's always um, worth a look in your local area if you would be interested in that. Um, when you are going that angle, you will most likely be rescuing a um, fully grown chicken. Um, these chickens we have hand raised since them hatching. So there will be a different sort of set of hurdles for you to go through. Um, a chicken that is fully grown most likely was not handled all that much growing up. So it might be a lot more wary of you initially. Um, if you raise <clears throat> a chicken by hand and you pick them up every day, you give them pets every day, of course they're going to be a lot more friendly. So it's just a different hurdle that you need to pass. Um, if you're very inclined for getting newly hatched chickens, you're going to need to make sure you have a brooder, you have heat lamps, a UV light, and you're going to need to be very focused on the chickens for the first few weeks of their lives. Um, they're the most kind of uh, dangerous of their lives. Um, there is a likelihood if they're not getting the sort of heat that they need, the food that they need, and the water that they need, that your little chickens could perish. So you need to keep a close eye on them and their development. So you need to be doing the research. You need to know the temperatures that they're going into, and you need to give them special care. Uh, once a chicken is um, more fully grown, they are a lot more self-sufficient, sort of like a um, cat. Um, you know, you provide them a little bit of sand in their area or a little bit of dust or dirt in the lawn. They're able to kind of clean themselves. They'll give themselves dust or sand baths. They'll preen themselves, and as long as they have access to food and water, they will feed themselves. Uh, what you'll need to be concerned with at that point is to then clean up after them. Um, in our little play area here, we um, sweep and we mop about twice a day. The little chickens spend most of their day outside in, the co in their uh, coop and in, uh, out on the lawn. And then during the night, because they're not fully grown, we bring them back in here for the play area to sleep, to keep them safe from predators. And uh, yeah, so um, once you get your chickens like all set up, they're all happy, I would just say they're probably about one step above cats in sort of upkeep. And that's only really because when you get chickens, I recommend that you get at least three. Um, they are incredibly social little animals. Um, if you only get one chicken, they will become incredibly bonded to you. And if you are away from the house and from them for long stretches of the time, they will become incredibly stressed out. They will miss you greatly because to them, you are their whole world. You are their flock. 
and they can get very depressed. If you're not around, they can get sick. So by having um, at least three chickens, you have allowed them to create their own little flock in which they will always have company, they will always have playmates, and they won't get lonely when you're not around. You can still be part of their flock, you can still be part of their lives, but you know, they won't be so dependent upon you for company. So I hope all of that helps out. Oh, and Super Sassy Cat Lassie, thank you for the All Seeing Upvote Award. Sorry, I got really into answering the question there for uh, CHWiz20. Oh my, oh my. I went on almost a little bit of a rant there. I do apologize. I am just very into, you know, the sort of educational aspect of these streams. And I just want to make sure any potential future ch future uh, chicken owners are well equipped with some knowledge. There you go, Stormy. There you go. Well, you got a little bit of chicken dandruff there on my jeans there. Are you picking up after yourself? Look at your little fuzzy feet. Oh my, oh my. And right here on my shoulder are Kagome. I just spent most of the time doing a little bit of preening. I've looked over a couple of times and I've seen her kind of napping. Oh, she's looking at my head again. No more jumping on top of my hat, young lady. No, no, no. No, no, no. And what you doing, Stormy? You and Braveheart just kind of looking at each other? Oh my, oh my. One fun fact about our little Stormy is that he also um, has hyperpigmentation, just like Braveheart here. Uh, Stormy's skin, Stormy's organs, even his very bones are also black. The only difference is that our Stormy's um, feathers are gray. So if uh, our Braveheart and our Stormy do have a few crossbreed little chicks together, they will all likely have that hyperpigmentation gene as well. I think because both of them have the gene, um, all of the babies would have it. Um, if our Stormy and uh, Kagome have babies, I think that only a quarter of the chickens would have the hyperpigmentation gene. But that would be very interesting to see an Onagadori with hyperpigmentation and fluffy feathers. That would be quite the sight there. There we go, there we go. Oh, and sorry about that. I think my chat kind of froze on my phone. There we go, there we go. And yes, no chicken should be lonely. And though tracks, please tell her I said, cheep, 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 bok, bok. What do you think about that, Kagome? Oh, then you kind of winked at me. I have no idea what that meant there. And uh, Garisho, yes, this is Kagome right here on my shoulder. Uh, Kagome is an Onagadori chicken. And the Onagadori is an endangered breed of chicken from Japan, who's been doing a lot of preening on my shoulder. Just did a little bit of the yawn. And the Onagadori have a, um, a mutation that causes their uh, tail feathers never to molt. Uh, we should expect our little Kagome's tail feathers probably to get at least three feet in length. Um, they're at about a foot right now. Um, I don't feed any of my chickens. Um, chicken. I know that there are some families out there that feed their chickens entirely food scraps.
from their uh, kitchen, and sometimes that actually can include uh, cooked chicken. Um, but in our case, we are not going to be doing that. It feels a little bit wrong to do. I know the chickens likely wouldn't care, but that's not really a line that I want to try to cross. Um, it's just our decision for our family and our little pets here. There we go, there we go. And we do our best to try to keep our chickens very um, happy. Um, they have this play area to be in. They have their coop in the outside that they're in most of the day. And we keep them as safe as we can um, inside at night from any potential predators. We try to give them lots of lovely treats. We give them lots of pets and try to keep them as comfortable as possible. They have their happy little flock all about them. And we do our best, because at the end of the day, we want these guys to live long, happy, and healthy lives. Um, and we feed these guys um, Mana Pro Organic uh, Crumbles, as you can see there. Um, we've uh, just finished their starter crumbles and are moving on to a uh, grower crumbles to sort of, um, you know, because their dietary needs are starting to shift as they are growing a bit older. And can I boop a chicken? Boop. There you go. There you go, Braveheart. A little boop there. And I can boop little Stormy. Boop. There you go. A little bit of hair styling for his little mohawk there. There, there, there. Lovely, lovely. Got a happy little cheep there from Stormy there for a second. You a happy little rooster? Oh my, oh my. And our flock right now is um, our little Stormy here, our Silky Rooster, our Ayam Samani Hen, Braveheart, and our Onagadori Hen, Kagome, who's just doing a bit of preening to her feathers and is just kind of really scratching her face there. Oh my. You have gotten so big lately. So, so big. A bit of a stretch. Moving those big tail feathers there. Yeah. A little honk. And focusing on your legs. Your feet have gotten huge. Oh my, oh my. And uh, Rickert996. Um, I have shown their outdoor living space in um, some of our streams in the past. Um, if you want to check it out, um, we have it on uh, one of our saved videos for our YouTube channel called Watching Chickies. There is a link to it in our profile page. Um, we have a much better internet connection um, inside here, which is one of the reasons why... Um, we conduct these live streams here in the playroom. Um, if I try to move out to the outdoor uh, coop with these chickens, the signal will likely cut off um, right as I am leaving the garage. But if you want to check out that video, check out their coop and everything, just check out that link. And we also have a link to our Instagram and our Patreon. And thank you to our lovely Patreons, Gamers Plane, Memento Mori, Lucidity, Xanthe, Terror Birdie, and February Monster. You guys are awesome, and you help us keep delivering these live streams to everyone here on Reddit and YouTube each and every day. And SRP44. Um, I haven't had much luck potty training the little chickens. I know that there have been some people out there who have managed it, but considering that um, the chicken's um, waist is all pretty much solid, 
it's a pretty easy thing to clean up after them. I sweep about twice a day here in the playroom, and then we mop about twice a day, and that pretty much um, kept, keeps everything clean. And then for any of their bedding materials, we simply just wash them in the washer. So it's all fairly easy to uh, maintain. There we go, there we go. Oh, oh my, oh polarity, thank you for the looking busy award there. That is much appreciated. Oh, times two. Oh my, oh my. Oh, and green dodo. These guys definitely will never get big enough to hunt dad. The only thing that they hunt me for are a few little cuddles here and there. Um, the biggest that um, Braveheart here is ever going to get is going to be about six pounds. She should be about five to six pounds when she is fully grown. And um, Polarity Bob, that is so many looking busy awards right there. Oh my, oh my. I think that's times eight there, so thank you. Times eight. Um, so our little Braveheart here is going to be about five to six pounds. Uh, Kagome will be about four to five. And um, since our little Stormy here is going to be a rooster, um, with those extra sort of like uh, male hormones, he should be getting to be about four pounds. Otherwise, as a female, he would have been uh, three pounds. There we go. There we go. And at least Braveheart there is giving the... Uh, the little dried baby sardines a bit more of a chance, just kind of pecking at them and having another little meal there. There we go, there we go. And Polarity, thank you again for all of those lovely little awards there. A lot of looking busy. Yeah? Uh-oh, I think our little Stormy wants to get up. Do you want to have a little cuddle with Kagome up there? There we go, there we go. So there is Stormy, come on. And let me get Kagome just to join him. Oh, no. Were you on the lookout for some food there, my little Kagome? Oh, and Polarity will thank you for showing your support there. That is absolutely lovely. And Stormy, you wanted to be let up? Well, now you're here on the top of the world, looking down upon our little creation. And what sort of inspiration will you have now? Are you going to be jumping down? Oh, there's a good angle of the extra toes on a Silky's foot. Oh my, a little squawk from our Kagome, as the three little musketeers there are rejoined. Hello, guys. Hello, Braveheart. Everyone's come down. Kagome's just kind of getting the food there. You're looking all from above. You seem a little bit paralyzed by indecision right there. Are you going to join the others? Or maybe just do that little yoga pose right there. Oh, down, down, down you go. And she has such an impact when she lands these days. She is our heaviest little chicken. Though at this point, I think Kagome wins the longest chicken award, if only because of her foot-long tail feathers now. And SRP44, um, Stormy has feathered feet because he is a silky chicken. And the, uh... Yeah, the feathers go all the way down the feet like um, little fuzzy trousers. And silkies also have one extra toe on each foot. Uh, normally chickens only have four toes on the foot, but silky chickens have five. And our little Braveheart is indeed a little thick chicken. 
but she is lovely. You know, she's our biggest little chicken, and she is quite a mellow little girl there. Oh, lovely, lovely. And Stormy's inbuilt pants are quite lovely. You know, it'll probably suit him well come the winter when they go out. But Lauren is going to ensure that all of our little chickens will have little sweaters come the winter. So they'll also have a little bit more heat that way. Of course, they'll be more like sweater vests since they won't cover their uh, wings. They'll still be able to flap their wings all about. Though I'm pretty sure it might drive Kagome a little crazy since she does like preening so much. We'll only have to put them on them when they're going outside. Oh my, so much kicking about with your food there. Yes, thank you, Hobo69, yes. Um, on the left in gray is our little silky chicken named Stormy. He is a rooster. On the right in brown and gold is our Onagadori named Kagome. And here in black is our Ayam Samani named Braveheart. There we go. There we go. And I wonder what colors Lauren is going to select when making the sweaters. She's been an avid sort of knitter and crafts person for quite a number of years. Hopefully she has some lovely buttons in which to put the sweaters on them. You know, I can't really imagine putting the sweaters by pulling them over their heads. I think even Braveheart might kind of protest against that. Yeah, I could only imagine how much that you are going to honk, my little Kagome. Oh, and grumpy old Dan, we are doing spectacularly today. I hope work went all right for you. And if you just need some time to relax and just watch a few animals be themselves, eat a little bit, drink a little bit, and have a few cuddles, this stream can be a nice way to just kind of center yourself. Oh, yes, I think we might need to do a Christmas card this year. That would be lovely with the little chickens. Just all around us with matching little sweaters. Oh my, oh my, February monster. That would be quite the little opening to each episode. Putting on little sweaters onto the little chickies or taking them off. Oh, and Sushi Takane recommends white for Braveheart will give a nice contrast. A pretty pink for Sassy Kagome and a deep blue for Mellow Stormy. Well, those sound all quite nice. I'm not sure if Lauren might try to do any patterns on any of them. I could imagine a little bit of a thundercloud with maybe a bolt of lightning might be appropriate for Stormy. And let's see, let's see. I believe Kagome means like uh, a pattern of holes. So maybe polka dots might be good for Kagome. And Braveheart, hmm. You know, maybe we can try the, the Scottish national flag there. He could be like William Wallace. Oh my, oh my. Oh, ah, almost dropped the camera there. And they're just kind of happily eating their crumble. And I think Kagome even managed to eat some of the um, little dried baby anchovies there. She has pushed some away, but I think she still has unintentionally eaten some, or maybe intentionally, who knows? She could be developing a taste for them. And they do have... A nice, lovely bit of protein in there. Oh, lovely, lovely. 
And we're not even hearing any sort of complaints from Kagome, so I assume that she is happy as anything right now. Looks like she's having a little adventure going through the crumble, finding the best bitch that she wants. There are um, still little bits of the okonomiyaki in there. There are the little dried anchovies, and of course there's the crumble with also little pieces of their grit to aid in their digestion. Whereas Braveheart here is more focused on the little bits that she's already gotten on the edge of the feeder. There we go, there we go. And Green Dodo, well, I think I might have a little trouble if I try to put face masks on the little chickies. I'm not sure how I would affix face masks to chickens. They don't have ears, unfortunately. But they are, you know, quarantining. They aren't really seeing uh, many people. They are staying at home. The only sort of road trip that they've taken in their lives since coming here is to go to the actual vet. Though eventually when they're full grown, who knows, maybe we'll try to take them out on a walk. Um, chicken leashes are a thing. So that would be an interesting little trip around the neighborhood. Oh, and Stormy, you're standing so tall, raising your head as high as possible. And that's a sort of little dominant stance there from our little Stormy. He's trying to keep his head higher than Kagome and just trying to tell her, you know, I am the man of this little flock and I am looking out for you. And I don't really think Kagome cares all that much. Oh, it's okay there, Stormy. It's okay. I saw what you were trying to do there. I saw that. Are you just trying to follow Kagome again? Trying to tell her that you're a man? Oh dear, oh dear. She's kind of looking at you, looking at the outside, and just walking away. Oh dear, oh dear little Stormy. It's okay. Give yourself a little bit more time to grow up. You know, you're still in your chicky phase. You're not a full-grown chicken yet. And I do know those hormones are just really streaming through your body. But give it time. Give it time. You'll grow into yourself. And you're right there, Polarity. Our little Stormy really does need to stretch his neck to get onto Kagome's level. Kagome doesn't have to do much to actually be at a higher level than our little Stormy. Oh dear, Stormy, oh dear. It's not the right time to get into this sort of a contest with Kagome. She has so much more energy than you. And Braveheart is just kind of watching this whole thing like, what are you doing, little Stormy? What are you doing? Such a ridiculous little man. Oh dear, oh dear. <laughs> and Dad's just watching over in the corner with his camera. Oh my, oh my. Stormy, what are you doing? Oh dear. Do I need to pick you up and give you a cuddle? Kagome is looking over at me like, Dad, Dad, can you stop Stormy for a second? Can you just, just stop? <laughs> Stormy, come here. Come here. Give Kagome some alone time. Oh, listen to these very high-pitched cheeps that he gives. It's okay. It's okay, my little... Look how low he lowered his head there. Oh, my... It's okay there, it's okay. 
And Super Sassy Cat Lassie, thank you for the wholesome award there. That's much appreciated. And we appreciate you, little Stormy. It's okay. I know it's hard being the only little man of your flock. But that doesn't mean you need to try to assert your authority. We all appreciate you for who you are. A lovely little chicken. There we go. There we go. Such a defeated little head there when I picked you up. It's all right. It's all right. What, do you think I'm the alpha chicken or something? Oh dear, oh dear. See? They just hopped up just to see that you're all right. You're a part of the flock too, and you don't need to try to assert your authority. You can be your little egg self if you want to be. There you go, there you go. The other girls are just no too big for you right now. They'll just appreciate you being you. Oh, lovely. I mean, hormones hit us all differently. And for our little Stormy, they're just kind of um, hitting him like a hammer right now. He's trying to push himself so hard to be the little man of the flock. And I just don't want him to get into any big confrontation with the other chickens or to get depressed over the fact. So I'm just going to give him a few cuddles right now and just calm him down here. There you go. And February Monster, yes, the chickens are firmly into their puberty period. As we can see right now, um... Braveheart and Kagome are kind of in their little hen click right now. They are just being together um, on their perch here, side by side, just kind of bonding. Well, over here we have the boys together. We have Dad and we have little Stormy. So we'll hang out together. And don't worry, Stormy, when you are a full-grown adult rooster, both Kagome and Braveheart will be all over you. And you know why? Because you're going to be the only little rooster in their lives. They're going to look at you like quite the catch. And you don't need to persuade them about how big and manly that you are. They're going to see you for the special fuzzy little guy that you are. There we go. And there are some chicken butts there. As Kagome and Braveheart just kind of bond together over their little shared experience with Stormy there. Oh my, oh my. I don't think you impressed them today, Stormy, but give it some more time. Give it some more time and you'll win them over. There we go, there we go. An alternate title for today's stream, Stormy Tries to Impress the Girls. Spoiler alert, it did not exactly succeed today. Oh dear, oh dear. Don't worry, you're gonna keep growing. You're gonna keep growing. No, oh, there you are, my fuzzy little guy. And Sushi de Carne, yes, you are right. You know, you got this stylish hair here, Stormy. I'm sure the girls will love that. We'll style it up every day to look really lovely. And they won't be able to resist once they're fully grown. But right now, Braveheart and Kagome are teenagers. So, you know, they might just like hanging out together every once in a while. They're not always going to want a little man to come up to them and just trying to raise his head higher than them. 
Oh dear, oh dear, it's okay, it's okay. You got dad by your side. You got dad here to give you a few cuddles even when you kind of fall flat on your face there. Oh, my lovely, oh, my lovely, it's okay, it's okay. How you feeling? You okay there, champ? Just take it one day at a time, one day at a time. You know, when uh, Lauren is getting your new kind of little headband here, maybe we'll get one with lots of little sparkles on it. Maybe that will attract the ladies a bit more as well, huh? You could be a proper sort of glam rock band star. There you go, there you go. Oh yes, February monster. Yep, Stormy just kind of went up to the other chickens before. He kind of did his equivalent of a chicken rooster flex. And was just saying, love me ladies. And they looked at him. And just were kind of walking away from him. Oh my, oh my. Yeah, we're going to glam you all up. And they are going to love you, Stormy. Give it time. Give it time. Three months from now, when they're producing eggs, hey, they're going to be really interested in you. They are. They are. And either way, you're always going to be a member of the flock and one of their precious little friends. Yeah. Oh, I think Stormy has recovered a bit. There you go. All you needed was a few pets and a little pep talk from Dad. And a little flex from the rooster's neck. Oh, are you ready to go see the girls again? Oh, a little yawn? Okay. Okay. Yeah? He's kind of walking over towards them, looking at them. Here. There you go. There you go. Oh, a few no noises from Kagome. I'm not sure if it's a hello, Stormy, or if it's a, oh, you again. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Well, you're with the girls again. You can just settle down and appreciate being in their company. Every day is another opportunity for your little success there, Stormy. Yes, he can succeed there, Kagome. Such a sassy bird. Such a sassy bird. But you'll win them over. You'll see, my little son. You'll see. Ooh, and look at that little silky comb that's developing right there underneath the feathers. It's a little lumpy, but I can see it developing. Oh my, oh my. And Sushi de Carne, yes, the hens are kind of sitting in their own private area that our little Stormy can't get to. But that's all right, Stormy, where you're standing is much better anyway, because you got the fluffy towel right here. They have to just be standing on that little wire. That can't be as comfy, can it? No siree. Oh, and weirdest man, you know, I think Kagome might be trying to play a little bit hard to get from our little Stormy. But in the end, I think they're gonna really be bonding. Oh, and February Monster, you know, one of the plans that we're going to be having for, um, you know, when we're going to be away, potentially in the future, when, you know, things like and the idea of a vacation or a trip really comes back, is to get some um, cameras to bring into this area and just set them up so we can always keep an eye on the little chickens. And in that way, um, even if we do go on the trip, we might be able to do a few 
um, remote streams in which I can do some narration and we can see the chickies um, by themselves or when we have friends or family come over to help them. Because I'd like to, you know, keep on maintaining doing these daily live streams for the long term. There we go, guys. There we go. And we are here in the last um, couple of minutes of our broadcast today. And I'd like to thank you all for tuning in with us. You know, we had a few pitfalls for a few streams ending early because of some technical errors, but you all stuck through it. Um, we came here together. We watched the chickens have a nice day. We saw a little bit of interpersonal drama between Stormy and Kagome there. And we all had a lovely time. Um, it's always great to speak to new friends and old and just kind of relax looking at these chickens. It's hard to feel mad, bad, or even a little sad when you're seeing a chickie just having a lovely day. And now these guys are destined to go out into their outdoor coop, enjoy a bit of fun in the sun, and we hope to see you guys all again soon. We'll be back tomorrow at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And you can check us out on Watching Chickies on YouTube. There's a link to it on my profile, as well as a link to our Instagram and Patreon. Thank you to our lovely Patreons, Gamers Plane, Memento Mori, Lucidity, Xanthe, Terror Birdie, and February Monster for your continued support. And thank you guys all for tuning in with us and just chatting with me. It is lovely to answer your questions, to just, you know, kind of talk to you guys, and just have a lovely time. And Polarity, well, thank you for the Silver Award there. And Sushi de Carne, yes, Kagome perching on my head and bombing me was a very interesting moment as well. I forget which part of the video today had that, but it was a funny little moment and a good reminder of why to always have a few wipes around you when you are live streaming little chickies. There we go, guys. There we go. And a bit of calm here at the end. We all look forward to seeing you all again very soon. From our lovely hen, Braveheart, our Yamsamani, our precocious little Kagome, our Onagadori, and our little silky rooster, Stormy. We all wish you a lovely day, and we hope to see you all again very soon. All right, guys. Bye-bye.